Hello, Charlie. Okay. Is everybody there? Kelvin, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, you can. Yeah. All right. Hi, Sharon. Hey. Uh, I car broke down in a way, and that's why I'm running a little late. The car broke down in a way, and so my apologies, please. As soon as I get this damn thing focused. I'm trying to get everything set up here. We're, we're doing okay. Charlie, you there? Charlie, yeah. can you hear? Yes. Car broke down at Harlem and Higgins. Andy came and picked me up, and we're, 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 we'll be ready to go in a minute. Our speakers here, we're ready. No, oh, sure. Sure. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, I will. He's on. All right. Uh, okay. All right, I'm going to get up to David. All right, let's check the. Uh, you can hear me, Charlie? Yes. Okay. Okay, Charlie, can you still hear me? Yes. How about that? Can you hear me? You're getting muffled. All right, hang on. Uh, I think you're my number. Yeah, let's let's talk. Mr. McCune, are you there? Um, Mr. McCune, are you there? Stay here tonight. Okay. Number. Yeah, so Eric. I can't dial. Yeah. Okay. Let's um, and I I can do my card. Okay. You can still hear me, Charlie? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Good. I'm gonna have to change a change something up here real quick. Just give me a second. I got one more thing to do. Jesus Christ! Why am I having so much trouble tonight? Because you're in a hurry when when you're. Why am I having so much trouble? One more thing will be all set, okay? Because you're dealing with Satan. Yeah, I was just gonna say he must have a curse on him. <laughs> Might be. Resolutions. Um, yeah, I've got to do what? something more with my bands. Try and write a bit more. Um, can you show someone I made? I didn't hear it. What were you pledging? To do more to, to get the band together. I've got bands and I'm going to try and get get some gigs and that. Oh really? Yeah. Charlie, can you hear it? See me. Yeah. How about yourself, Charlie? Right, Are you trying to use resolutions? I'm not going to use any plastic bottles. That's going to be hard. That is hard. Get up there and talk. I check the damn connection. Let's see if you can hear me. Yes, exactly. 
Uh, which, which microphone? Both of them. Okay, can you hear me now? How about, can you hear them, Charlie? Perfect. Yeah, I think started. so. Charlie. He's not saying anything. Okay. okay. okay Mike, He's got to talk. What? Okay. He's got to say something. Go ahead and can say. You, can you hear me? I'm talking right now. Can you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Yep. Okay. Good. Well, sounds like it's working. Okay. Uh, you about, you about ready then? Yeah, we're going to do it. Okay. okay. I'm going to get started now. As soon as we get everything, we get a lot of people logging in. Okay. Now. Okay. Yeah. I was Good evening and welcome to the Comets and Complexes. My name is Tim. I want to welcome everybody here tonight. Attention, everybody. My name is Tim. We're welcoming everybody to the College of Complexes. Um, I'd like to welcome all of you for our first meeting on June 6th. The full of the college is as follows. We have a we'll have a brief announcements period by Charlie Paydock. Then we'll have our speakers speak up to about one hour or so, followed by a question and answer period, followed by our uh, infamous announcements period. I mean, our, our rebuttal period. Speaker, look at the last word. Jim, yes, so we get started. I think we should have a moment of silence for Patrick Butler. Oh, yes, Patrick Butler, too, was one of our college members who just passed away. I'd like to have a moment of silence for Pat Butler, please. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, did you hear that? Moment of silence for Pat Butler, please. Let's have a moment of silence. Okay. Now again, all right, Charlie, we'll get started with the announcements. Let me get to my Zoom and we'll get going. Oh. All, right. all right, Charlie, take it away. All right, welcome everyone to meeting number 3,748 of the college of complexes, the playground for people who think. And I should remind you the first meeting of the college of complexes was on January 6th, 1951. So I guess we've been around about 73 years. Okay, now although I am not a capitalist, I will give an advertisement for our upcoming programs. On January the 13th, Dr. Mike Krauss of the Center for Pluralism will be talking about the events in the Middle East, Palestine and Israel. Uh, so it should be a good program, Dr. Mike Krauss, uh, Center for Pluralism. On January 20th, our own Jonathan Barton, Jonathan Barton, We'll be talking about preserving progressive legislation. It's an important thing. We all should take be sure to be remain vigilant. On January 27th, we'll be talking about a human rights issue, the right to public transportation, specifically for those who are disabled or elderly. Activist Kathy Powers. There's all kinds of links on this topic. On February the 3rd, uh, Ken Williams from our satellite campus has a very detailed and accurate PowerPoint presentation on the accomplishments of the Biden administration, February 3rd. On February the 10th, Jim Feitzer, conspiracy theorist, will be returning to the college and talking about Sandy Hook and conceivably other conspiracies of which he's uh, published uh, many books about and so forth. So Jim Fetzer, uh, Dr. Jim Fetzer, um, he was in charge of the uh, academics for truth on 9-11. On uh, February the 17th, Sid Cohen will be returning to continue his discussion on class and society. A historical pattern perspective. On February the 24th, our own uh, Professor Lichtenberg will be talking about the topic of moral absolutes. 
How many of these do you inculcate in your lifestyle? And that brings us into March. And we have five open dates uh, in March. So if you'd like to speak, uh, just let me know. Give me a title and a written description. Okay, Sam, that's it. Thank you. Take it away. All right. All right. Um, Jim, I'd like to make an announcement. All right. Well, go ahead. Come on up and okay. make an announcement. Okay. Any more announcements for the clerk of the order? Go ahead. Yes. Hi. Um, I'm Ellen Corley. And I'm. one thing is I had wanted to give a talk this night. I guess Charlie did, somehow didn't get the email about the history of College of Complexes. And um, since it's his anniversary, and I gave the, the, the talk for but, um So I will be trying to maybe fit myself in later uh, um, in March or something. But uh, I do am involved with the a new group called the Truth Action Project. And uh, it's a great group that is kind of a build out of the 9-11 truth movement, now focusing on COVID truth, 9-11 truth, and uh, Dr. Laura is going to be their first uh, speaker coming up on February 1st or something. And I'm going to be organizing something for Martin Luther King's birthday. Uh, Bill William Pepper, they know, is um, he's a friend of that group, and uh, I'm going to be organizing. He fought for Martin Luther King's case to that it was, okay. was a state-sponsored right. event. And so that's coming up. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Ellen. All right. Any other announcements from the good of the other either from on Zoom or here? Uh, what time and place is the event? What time and uh, place is the event, Ellen? Uh, which one? We were just talking the about Martin, the Bill Pepper one is Mark Luther King's uh, birthday. Yeah, okay, January we'll get back to everybody on it. All right, tonight, let's, uh, I don't remember your name, sir, but if you want to come up and introduce yourself sure. and get started, please do. Okay. My name is Tim. Let's welcome our main speaker tonight. Uh, and it looks like you're, we're being videotaped. We are. We are being videotaped. I got a camera here, so we're all set. And, uh, I'm winter late. Winter late? Yep. Yeah. Welcome, Mr. Winterlake, and uh, the floor is now. Tim, uh, Andy just called. Your car is on the way. Oh. Yeah, back to Palestine. Well, He's my name is uh, Winterlake. I don't know uh, okay. if any of you are aware of me. I am a philosopher with a background in quantum physics. Um, I started my Luciferian path at a very young age, probably about five years old. Uh, when I first, first started dabbling with tarot cards and had inspiration with the occult. Um, the occult has always drawn me, even as a child. Um, and then as I grew older, probably my teenager, I was uh, putting curses on people, and I found them to be very effective. Um, I started killing people with curses. Uh, in a very effective manner through the satanic power. Uh, it was a bully that I dealt with, um, and I'm very physical, and I could handle myself all through, and I had rarely been bullied, but I had been bullied by a series of older guys that were just ridiculous and kind of stupid, and um, then uh, through a curse, I put them under a semi and decapitated. So <laughs> it was an experience that oh I uh, first realized that I had real satanic power. When you come onto it and you don't know that you have it, but then when you awaken to it and realize that you have the power, which is a cornerstone of black magic projection, then I awaken. And from there, I went into work with police and solving murders. I solved several murders, but you turned yourself in. It was also a situation where um, they start to look at you as a suspect. Yeah, because the psychic aspect of 
That's the the black magic exploration is very real. Exclamation point. So from there, I soon got out of that. And probably um, gave it a real aptitude probably about until about 2009 when I first published my book, The Satanic Paradigm, which touched in on a lot of things that were happening in our modern society. Uh, it was the exponential growth of, of Satanism and Luciferianism and witchcraft within our society as the church edict has died away. Uh, you'll find that in modern society now, everyone, especially in the youth of our time, have now evolved into the practice of the occult in one way or another through television and radio and fashion witchcraft of the occult is everywhere and seeing it in this great exponential growth i had written another book called the Treatise of the Magic of War, which is the book of Black Magic, that touches on this subject of societal change and the exponential growth of Satanism and Luciferianism and witchcraft within our society. And it's just, it's been growing ever since. And I'm 10 books in, and I'm still learning from this search, as I am a philosopher, in the vein of Lord Byron or Dashwood, who was the leader of the Hellfire Club, or Madame Lebatsky, who started the Theosophical yes, yes. Movement, One, two, or Jiref, who was a magician in India, who became a Western uh, prophet, and in a way, even Aleister Crowley, who later uh, adhered to some things. But I don't like Crowley's stance on um, things that he had borrowed from basically biblical and from the Sir Dashwood concepts of what the Hellfire Club were doing. What I'm talking about is, is that this form, where I'm at in Luciferianism, and where most people are at this level, are not where Crowley was. Crowley was kind of like in our recent time, but he was killing animals, he was hurting people, he was actually in certain ways, there's even been some other things that it might have tied to him. He wanted to kill a cat just to see if he could do it and so on. And there are groups out there today that are carrying on like this, but that is not where I'm at. So knowing where I am is in my Luciferian past and the thousands of people that are involved in my group, we don't. We don't adhere to anything to do with sacrifice, which is tired and old in our opinion, because it has been tried and true and done throughout the Mexican ages. Throughout, you know, in, in Mexico, they, they had the Quetzalcoatl sacrifices and so on and so on. These things, sacrifice is old. And the reason why I'm touching on it is because this is not the path that the modern Luciferian is on. A modern Luciferian is into the cosmic. He is into the looking outward into achieving Luciferian enlightenment to getting the power and the money and the ability to manipulate people's minds and to control and to elevate ourselves to a new echelon, to a new human being. And we are evolving into a Luciferian being with a mindset and a goal that is our guiding light, which is power. That is all we believe in, that is all we want. If we want something, we get it. And we can snap, whether it's some girl or whether we want a couple hundred thousand dollars or we want to buy a building, we do it. And we have great ability to do so, you know. I don't work a regular job. I haven't for years and years. I'm very much set. All my properties are paid off, blah, blah, blah. This path works for me. Now this path, though it may work for me and the others that are involved with me, doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna work for you. It's not for everybody. It's a mindset that probably has to start from a very young age. And it's not something that I just decided to choose and in going into this Machiavellian path. 
it was something that kind of chooses you. You know, Machiavellia was very much a philosopher, of, in, in, intuitively was tied to politics, and he wrote The Prince, which goes into the background of controlling masses, or let's, let's rule the world. Now, this is another thing that the modern Luciferian has zero interest in, to clarify. So one, we're not interested in killing people, per se, just in sacrifice, or hurting animals, or hurting children. Two, we're not interested in ruling the world. It's a waste of time. Now, in ruling the world, now, in my philosophy, I believe in the inalienable Luciferian truth that all men are created evil. So in looking at this evil, we have to understand that good is a construct, that through the confines of law, we are allowed to live in a good sphere. Now, if we remove good, or if we remove the boundaries of law, man deprived his beast. So within about two weeks, if we did not have the construct of law, mankind is at each other's throats. They're killing each other. They're savages. And my whole philosophical exploration at this point is finding out why that happens. Why is it that if we remove the boundaries which constrain our innate natural evil, does this occur? So, through, so this is a new thing. So in my third premise is I do believe that there is a natural powerful evil within all humanity, which is yet to be explored, but it must maintain to be lawful. We must have a lawful way of doing it or we become barbarians. We become ISIS. We burn people in cages. We put them back on crosses. We're like Nero, where he would light an entire hill of inverted crosses just to light his way through the park. And there were people on these crosses. This barbarism has happened in our history and it could happen again. And it has happened in our modern times, especially just a few years ago with the whole ISIS, ISIL experience, which people quickly forget. Now in looking at this, we could talk about a fourth thing. The fourth thing being that is Satan or Lucifer or demon by a thousand Leviathan, Asmodeus, Belial? These are all just given for our, our innate knowing of evil as a force. Now, this evil is real. We give it a name. It could be Aram, which is the most ancient name for evil. As I mentioned before, Quetzalcoatl which is another form or a name for evil. This evil is cosmic. It is not just of the earth. It is not just terrestrial. This evil can get into individuals. It can move around. It can become very much a darkness in space in a cosmic way. Now, this cosmicism of it, as I said, is very much beyond earth. And it's, and it's seen throughout in the universe. Now, as a remote viewer, which in ancient med medieval times would be known as clairvoyance or clairaudience, you can perceive things in the universe that are alien or have all kinds of other intentions. But everything that I've seen and others like me that have looked clairaudiently, clairvoyantly, remote viewing, whatever you want to call it, into the universe has seen other forms of us as evil. So this evil is in throughout our universe. And we will come to discover this more as now the government has just finally admitted, yes, there are aliens. We have 12 spacecraft. We have, we have alien bodies. These things are unknown to us. And it's all coming out. But it's going to be more and more that these things are like us. And if they are anything like us, we are not a good species. Our human race, the satanic race, is not good. We don't view things in a very good light. And within the next 10 to 20 years, 
more things are going to come out and we are going to evolve further through satanic science, through life extension, through nanocellular technology. We'll be able to overcome death, become maybe some variant of a cyborg through the satanic singularity. With the phone in your pocket, you'll merge it with your blood and you will be able to clean yourself out. And we are at a time when we could basically reset. And that is kind of what the elites are looking to do. And they've even kind of danced. They said, oh, get ready for the great reset. Or, you know, we're talking about year zero. Well, there's going to be a couple of things that are going to happen before then. But all of what I'm talking about is going to happen within the next decade. Everything I predicted in 2009 came to fruition. Not that you're aware of it because I'm just now speaking to this group. But when I'm talking about future wise, will come to pass. Life extension and satanic science. So that's the fifth cornerstone of it. And then there are many others. But this is just the gist of kind of where I'm at with my occult path. And as I said, my path is not your path. And it's not something that it is looking to infringe upon others' beliefs. You know, the only real threat that we're facing is a religion or a doctrine or something that infringes upon us. You know, there's no threat from Christianity that is fine to be able, or there's no other threats. However, like in looking at Islam, for example, diametrically opposed to a lot of things. And they have been a problem for about a thousand years since the time of Countess Bathory and her first purge against the Ottoman Empire, all along with Vlad Tepish, who had always been at bay and been fighting the Crescent. The Crescent seeks to shove the Quran down our throats. Now I'm giving you a warning because this is a prediction. This will happen and come to pass, possibly a nuclear conflict brought on by Islam. It, will, it has been delayed, yet it is still very apparent. These groups in Islam seek to bring our Western civilization to rubble. Now, in looking at that, they will use what this, whatever is available to them to do so. So I'm just giving you an awareness that Islam, out of everything else, is a threat to our society, and we need to examine it and look at it in a very logical minded way this, this now this statement is not meant to say that i hate on the people i am not and i'm not hating on the people of islam i am hating on the belief that is being told to them that they are able to say that we are the infidel that we are the lesser that you are gay we're going to throw you off a bridge that if you're a small girl who has a torn Quran in your bag that we're going to stone you to death, that women are cattle. These are all in their doctrine. So just coming away, I'm just giving the group a warning and expressing a truth about where, you know, my path began and where my journey is now. And I can take questions if anyone wants to give me a question. Okay. Behind you. Thank you. Um, all right. Just give me a minute so we can get our participants. The first question I have for you is this. Uh, how do you, what exactly is your source of satanic call? Is it just an awareness, some kind of spiritual thing or a series of, uh, of incidents that you did these curses or whatnot? Just exactly what happened? It's from youth. It was just a uh, an innate knowing call. Uh, you definitely feel it. It's not something that is not felt. You want to, you could say it's visions. Um, you could say it's uh, kind of uh, an ability to ma manipulate time and matter, uh, you know, bend reality to my will. Even as a child, I was able to. Um, and then as I've gotten older, if I really express it, and by the way, there's none of that going on here now. I'm just being an open book. Uh, I know that's hard to believe, but there is deception in this game, and I'm not rowing it tonight. But in to answer your question, it was something that just started from youth, and uh, I just embraced it, ran with it. And um, 
it's really it's been my path now this path is very very dangerous it is very dangerous it always tests your metal it's not for everyone you know i was down in louisiana recently and i was having a discussion and i also do tarot readings and um i was reading for a person who had a similar way they started young and so on and so on and you can just see like by tapping into them and say well you know this and this and this are going to happen and um, that person had a short terrible reading and basically i said that that person would be dead probably within three weeks unfortunately that came to pass so the, the path is very arduous it tests your metal it's not for everyone and it's um very dangerous to be honest so why do you keep going on it then and then we'll go to another question after that well for me it, it will it will once you get bitten by the serpent you are challenged you are challenged man like you are challenged to go to the edges of the universe i mean like it is something else. I just don't know. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Now, uh, loud, Mike, so we can hear you. Loud, loud and proud. Okay. Louder, Mike. Loud, shout it. Loud and proud. Okay. Can you hear me now? Repeat the question. Right. So, we'll repeat the question. Interesting. <laughs> uh, what do you what do you think I got in your lane? I think it was a war protest, a big short fly in the Western world. Hold on. Okay. Another form of evil, right? War is, war is the constant. War has been the power constant since mankind was come about. It's been since the first Neanderthal bashed the head in of his enemy with a skull or a club or a piece of wood. This is the question that I am facing in looking at man's innate evil um, and why it is and good at being the construct. Now, that is the issue. Why aren't we just innately be, be able, the word is very difficult to say, but inalienably to be good? I don't know. I'd love to have a utopian society where everyone's altruistic everyone's good to one another we all look at each other in level face but it's not going to happen and that is why i want to know why but go ahead with your question well war is because of stealing land or stealing money or resources and, and why do we do that why do we have to steal why are we why do we have this urge well, we've been in oil wars for about 30 years right but what and so we're driven to do this for our necessity to survive we are separating. We are the beast. Right. The beast, though. The beast to take, to, to kill, to rise. This is the question. Like, the war is our power constant. And those who have the ability to perfect the more perfect weapon are the succeeding passion fires behind this. So, when you were talking earlier, I got into your late. All right, next question. We so, got so let him go. We don't want to get no, this. it's a dialogue. It is the occult satanic power. So that's what you're into. Yeah. Okay. And that's evil and Diablo and evil came in later as my as a is my exploration. Oh, it's an exploration. It, it, I'm a philosopher with a background in quantum physics. So I'm looking at things on a multi-level, like you're an observer, you're not a practitioner. Oh, I'm a practitioner. Oh, yeah. I have to. I have. And I admit it that with magic, yes. Yes. All right, who's next? Oh, my second part question. What's the story behind that jacket? It's just, it's, it's just how I dress. I mean, I, I, have, I, have a, I have five closets and six houses, you know. Okay. All right. Who's got the next question? All right. Karina. Hang on, Karina. Loud, please, Karina. Okay. 
You know, that would be part of it. You know, it's interesting. He borrowed the, the writer uh, for, for that. He borrowed a lot of that from Sir Dashwood, from the regimes that have been since, like the Roman Empire. Uh, he borrowed his idealisms, you know, in making Star Wars. He borrowed the entirety of the concept of the Force from occult knowledge, occult power, very similar to like the Nazi regime has done and so on. They steal or take from different parts to develop this. Yes, the Force, it's interesting. It's a pretty much um, kind of where it is, except that's a pretty extraneous, but it could happen where we begin to actually manipulate matter. In Star Wars, they're manipulating matter. I, you know, in my work, I can manipulate time and space and I can bend reality, but I can't bend matter. Like, if you see in Star Wars, they're able to just rip that picture off the wall through telekinesis. They've broken that barrier that is in our minds. Now, the reason why we even know what telekinesis is, is probably somewhere along the line. Like even looking at the Coral Castle, which was constructed in Florida by a man who was no taller than five feet this tall, who was able to lift tons of stone. And I highly recommend you go and visit this place. It's a modern Stonehenge in our culture. It's in Miami. But he was able to bend and do what the occultists, like what you describe as the force, ripping stuff through telekinesis, lifting and moving objects and people and so on. That's a whole different thing. And I think in time we may evolve to that, especially as our satanic science evolves. So within the next decade, we're gonna see more and more as artificial intelligence takes hold, as our singularity takes hold, the singularity as I've explained is when we merge our, our being with technology, become one with the technology, What's in, the, what's in your phone and your hand runs soon will be in your blood and you'll be able to instantaneously be a part of some global mind and so on. And, and some of this can be separated as well. It'll be separated and parsed out, but it's very, very satanic. It's not looking to a God. It's looking to us as gods, creating something that is far superior than us. So we have now dethroned a concept of God and emplaced ourselves. That is why I'm using the word Satanism in regards to the science, because now we are the creator. We are evolving to a higher form. And through our technology, we will be able to evolve further. And as I said, life extension, a renewal, vitality that comes battery all on after, the renewal of youth, the, the whole restart, the whole new man, the new Uber man, whatever. Mind control, absolutely. That stuff is real. It, it resonates with me because I've done it. I've done it with people, but I, I'm not doing it here. I mean, an open book here, but I'm not a saint. And that's why I expressed some truths in the beginning about how when I was younger, I was a little roughshod and I ran into some abuse that I took to a whole nother level that even to me surprised myself. That's when I knew that I had woken to it. And, you know, it's, it's growing and it's on an exponential rate. All right, Charlie, go ahead. Yes, um, let me get my picture up here. Uh, again, would you please, if you get questions from the audience, kind of... Please repeat them. Okay. All right, Charlie, go ahead. You're muted, Charlie. All right, again, I uh, get questions from the audience. Would you please repeat the question? Because I'm sorry, uh, I don't think a lot of us are hearing them. But my specific inquiry, sir, Winter, is uh, if there is a great reset 
taking place within 10 years, specifically how or where are they organized? Will the evil ones prevail? And if this is going to be precipitated by the Muslim Arab terrorists, there was significant uh, effort to contain them after their previous activities. So I, I'm not saying they're not going to come back, but they weren't successful by any means uh, in their previous efforts. Thank you. Charlie has expressed that the in looking at will evil ones prevail in the coming reset of 10 years um, and in regards to how they have failed in the past and so on. And yes, this is true. The, and I use Islam as an example because they're actively working against Western civilization. People don't want to admit it. It's the truth. They're actively working against freedom. Luciferian or whatever believes adamantly in freedom. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean the Crowleyism of do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law, which he borrowed from Sir Dashwood, who was originally the, the ones of the Hellfire Club in Scotland that used that as their moniker. It means that we do what thou wilt, wilt within the parameters of what law gives. We can't, we don't set law. A Luciferian doesn't say that we set law. Now, in looking at Islam, they are actively looking to infringe on a person's ability to be free. So, you know, as I've mentioned, everything I said was true. They burn people in cages that don't avow to them or take or swear their oath. They kill children and so on and so on. These are the barbarians of our culture. This is the barbaric evil that I am seeking or showing that needs to be stamped out. Now, in looking at what the word evil ones is in regards to the Great Reset, it's really not. It's because I'm coming from a premise that everyone is evil, that we are not saints, that we are looking at things to get for ourselves to survive. And if our survival is at stake, we will do anything to uphold that. If someone comes at us, we are going to take whatever steps necessary to sustain our own existence. Now, in the Great Reset that's coming, it will be of a natural way. It's already kind of just in an exponential way that through our science, as we advance, you know, as we become more of a, more into what artificial intelligence can bring, and what other things can bring, we're, we're, we're just evolving and our whole civilization is gonna be changing. We're gonna be upended. And maybe at that time we won't be as terrestrial based, we'll be able to get off of this planet, we'll be able to go other places. Our lifespan will extend. We won't be hating on each other so much because then we'll realize that race is just a contrived tool that divides people because racism is extremely tired, especially to a person like myself who knows aliens exist. So in looking at that, mankind is, is ready to be redefined. So I don't know if that makes sense, Charlie, but I hope I answered your question. Yeah, thank you. I just think you ought to mention for the benefit of the audience, perhaps not every everyone knows who Alistair Crowley was or did. So if you gave it a little sort of explanation that might yeah, Alistair Crowley was in, in a mid-century magician. Um, he had a lot of theories. I particularly don't like him because of his animal sacrifice stuff that he was doing. I don't like it at all. It, you know, one, you know, actions like that and the, the, the killing possibly of children that went on at Cephalu, which was a later thing when he believed himself to be a guru and you could not say the word I, and if you did, you had to cut yourself. And he had uh, kind of a horrible way with um, dealing with people. But um, he was good in some ways in regards to his magical efforts that he had written a lot about it. But he had also plagiarized and borrowed a lot of stuff from the Bible and kind of mutated it with the Egyptian ethos of the Book of the Dead and so on. But that's who he was. And he played a role, and so did 
Madame Blavatsky, who created the Theosophical Society. They have a headquarters here in Wheaton, Illinois, ironically, and she's Russian. So it's weird how that happened, but it's fascinating if you ever want to go over there and see that. And she was fundamental with her search for the Aryan. She was all about the Aryan. About 1901, she was, she was the one that really where we got into a race card. She divided people into seven root races and so on. And that was all borrowed by the National Socialists later on through Karl Hofstoffer, who was an occultist and um, in Germany. And in Germany at that time, they had taken all of Karl Hofstoffer's stuff and they had borrowed it for their occult information and giving you a little historical record. And then coming forward, even into the 1960s, we had Anton LaBay, who was first published with his book, The Satanic Bible, which became an atheistic aspect of things. Now, I'm not an atheist, but they were more touching in on more of a fashion show and doing it more to have, uh, you know, like orgies and parties. He looked at it more like a party and he did a lot of his work in San Francisco out of his house that he that he claimed to be a church and so on. I met Anton LaBay when he was alive. He was okay. Um, and there's been others. His grandson who recently died, Stan LaBay took on uh, his moniker for a while. And there's been others. I met Kenneth Anger. Kenneth Anger was a heavy occultist who had a lot of involvement with uh, Led Zeppelin and he brought down Led Zeppelin to a curse, Curse of the Frog, because they cheated him on a movie. So there's been from the historical, like Lord Byron, who was the poet, who was obsessed with Satan as well, who actually died fighting Islam uh, in, in his time. And then even going from him to all the different philosophers of our time, past and present. But now, in 2024, to myself, um, there's a few other people that are writing about it, but it's exponential populace is insane, the amount of people that are into it. Everywhere on television, you see witchcraft or shows of horror or anything, and that's all that's getting the rating. Nothing altruistic is happening. Everything is being expressed through the occult, and it's, it's just something that people are so fascinated by because I think they're looking for something. They're empty inside. They lack the ability to look for art or they don't have a concept. And they're, they're atheists. Um, there's a group called the Satanic Temple that is basically a political action group. And they just, they go on and they're atheists. They have nothing to do with the practice of Satanism, the practice of black magic or any of it. And they just go on and try to stir people up through being diametrically opposed to them. So, you know, you can say one thing and they'll say it's black and you'll say it's white and they'll just do that to create that black-white argument. But that's kind of some background from, from a historical record, but where we're going is very much scientifically driven at this point. And it's going to be fascinating. Well, go ahead, Thank Ellen. you. I'm going to get you online. Okay. Yeah. All right. You mentioned Anton LaVey, and I, I had read something about him. Is, isn't there a, a Jewish, a very covert Jewish terrorist group associated with Anton LaVey? The Order of the Nine Angles is a group. They're not necessarily Jewish, but they took Anton LaVey's teachings, which was actually plagiarized from Might is Right. I know too much about this stuff. Might is Right was written by a man named Ragnar Redbeard. That book, The Satanic Bible, which was put out by Avon, was basically certainly plagiarized from Might is Right, The Satanic Bible. The Order of the Nine Angles, although they claim to be some ancient organization that's been going on for hundreds of years, if not, they, were, they came about in the late 90s. And their goal is to do covert terror group actions that's another thing I'm not going to stand up here and say that all Satanists are good or people like, you know, oh, you know, because there was an ethic for a long time. And, you know, they say, oh, we'd never do anything bad. And we're all just, you know, it's all playtime. Well, it's not. 
because people do get killed and there are people that like are thrown under the bus and they do carry out terrorist stuff. They do go and attack churches and burn things and kill people. Uh, and they do it in very methodical ways and they even do it through other people. They'll manipulate other people's minds. The Son of Sam murders are very much manipulating of a, of a very low level person who was sent out and they, you can use other people in this thing to carry out your actions. And that makes it extremely dangerous. And these other things that have gone on, like people get inspired. There was an English man recently in, in England who decided he's going to kill a certain number of girls to gain the power of some kind of demon, which he was inspired by another writer known, known recently as Coetting. And um, he, all these people ended up getting canceled because of it, because this man went on a rampage and started killing people. He, so, they got killed or canceled? Or... The people that were around it got canceled inadvertently from the teachings that this person had taken on and the teachings were kill. And, it, you know, some people even want to legalize murder in certain parts of this world, which is going on wholesale anyway in certain aspects. Have, have you heard of MK Ultra? MK right? Ultra was a group with the Central Intelligence Organization that were utilizing narcotics and hallucinogenics during the Vietnam War. Are they using, would you Well, that's a long over, food? that's a long over group. It's over. They don't do it. It has happened. The Vietnam War was a massive experiment. Useless jungle then and a useless jungle now. Let's take 100,000 men and throw them in a jungle and let's test, see how strong our army is. And make a lot of money, by the way. Yeah, right, it, and it's called? been to no avail. Well, I thought what they... about ISIS? You, you, ISIS. You think, but I heard that ISIS is created by us, that, um, you know, by the CIA or US, you know. You know, it probably yeah. came about from that and went off the rails, and now it's just Along hating on any kind of other opposing religious doctrine. They blew up ancient Darian temples and things in Iraq that will never be replaced again if you know Isn't antiquity and part of it I'm sure it started it the United the States CIA? has so many tentacles mm -hmm. and they're just like there's so many groups of nefarious intention or they may think it's a good intention at the mm -hmm. time but it ends up and generally they get it really wrong you know, I mean, it just, it, these groups are all, all just people that are implanted in jobs that generally stay in there three or four years. They, they cook up some kind of concept, you know, like interchangeable skeletons, and they go and they go and they don't even realize that the circumstances or the, the consequences of their actions. So yeah, MK Ultra experiments, I mean, you name it. They're doing something now with adronocrine, which is a which is a fear molecule in humans. And let's try to extract it and use it. I mean, if they've got some, I mean, what that's an endless vaccine? rabbit hole. Do you think the vaccine is developed to kill people? And the vaccine was not them? meant to do that, but unfortunately, it's, remember, as we have everything in, in this, in, in a context, everything has a side effect. So Bringing the water may have something in it that would create something else to occur or something, you know. So, yeah, I mean, it activates something in a person that was meant to remain dormant for the rest of their life. So they take the vaccine and inadvertently you start having heart tremors or you start to have your skin break out or you end up getting something else because they have side effects. And that's, that's the, that, you know, you may go after this one thing. We have to kill this coronavirus, which has been in our our whole world since the beginning of time because it derives from cats and so on. The coronavirus has been in cats. So, and other things, but they've but don't jumped you think the CIA I don't think this is an appropriate topic. All right. We're moving off this. Uh -huh. Sorry. This is not an appropriate topic. Yeah, because Charlie likes, Charlie had, is part of this. So he's all right, all right, we're going to move on. This is not an appropriate topic. Wait, what's appropriate? Luciferian is appropriate? The vaccine is death? Is Can you be quiet for about five minutes? I got it. 
All right, Mike, Mr. Lehman, you've got the floor again. Loud, Mr. Lehman. Okay, so, uh, three part answer. Is your favorite song, Sympathy for the Devil by the Stones? The song, Sympathy of the Devil by the United by the Stones, is an amazing song. Yeah. Um, it's not my favorite song, but um, it's it, it really it expresses a lot throughout history. I mean, you know, I've met Mick Jagger. He's interesting. Uh, he's very much an occultist. Uh, so is uh, oh yeah, and so is um, you know the the guitarist for Led Zeppelin. He's huge. He bought the Laskin House, uh, which was Crowley's house, and he's a, a devout Crowley. I um, huge in Alistair Crowley. So yeah. Daughter of Crowley, do you think? I can get into that in a minute. Now, when you say Islam, I, I get a little confused. You mean all Muslims? This is where I'm at with that, and, and, and he's asking in regards to Muslims and Islams. Let me, let me, in Islam, let me express this very clearly. I have no hate on a Muslim person. I have really no hate on anyone except if they cross my boundary, and the boundary is like you know they're going to try to hurt me or my assets or whatever, as we all have. I don't hate on Muslims, but I hate on the ideology of Islam and its teachings that it is a supremacist religion, that it says that everyone else is an infidel. This is all in their doctrine. This isn't me making this up. No, Muslim is the person who follows Islam. Okay. And I don't and I don't hate Muslims. I, I don't I don't go around hating on Muslims. But their ideology hates on me. Their ideology, the the Islamic ideology through the Quran, says that women are cattle. They're lesser than human beings. They they say that you know anyone who is not of them is an infidel, which gives them the right to do anything they want to them. I'm just saying that Islam is a threat to society. It's a Western oh, society. What if it, the Luciferian isn't a threat to society? No, it's where it's where society is now. It really is. What about Christianity? What Christianity is, is at about a thirty percent. It's at an F. What, yeah. if, what about Zionism? Christ well, Judaism. There's only no, about not Christian Zionism. I thought the prophecy. Well, about you know, I did a study. My actually, the Sanctum of the Morning Star. We ran in a. Uh, what did we call that thing? We I spent some money on it. It was uh, an actual. What do you do when you? You think I would know? Um, when you hold a thing where you, you call people on the telephone, and um, we held a. Um, a Zoom call? No, no, no. It's uh, when you want to get an audit of where society is. So you call oh, like five. Survey. Th Correct. <laughs> I spent money to conduct the survey. We surveyed about 6,000 people. And this was across the spectrum of the United States. From, we did Florida through, we did, oh yeah, a good, a good section. We did some just across the United States from where you would call a Bible Belt or whatever up through Maine, okay? This is what the results came back. 60% of the people were into the occult or witchcraft. 20% were into Christianity. Another 10% claimed that they were atheists. And I think it was a mixed bag between all the others, whether it was like evangelical and Judaism and everything was like the last 20% or something. But no, Islam, no. Islam came in at about like 5%, maybe a percentile. It was very, it was very low. But it's the biggest religion in that that whole thing came back to be witchcraft, witchcraft, Luciferian, satanic practice, all buried into one with voodoo as well. Voodoo is huge. Is this being pushed by the media? The yeah, media? well, as I've expressed several. Let's times, control the meeting. As I expressed several times, it's, yeah, it's been done through. Um, it's been done through. Television, the shows, everything about witchcraft and so on. Next question. 
She's asking it, Charlie. She, she's asking a question in regards to there, there's a massive decline in the East Catholic Church. Yes, unfortunately, there has been a massive decline in the belief of Christianity across the board. Uh, even where we're looking at the Latter-day Saints to uh, the Mormons, the Lutherans, uh, and the Catholics, and so on. Now, again, as a Luciferian, I don't hate on any of them. I don't hate Jesus, the concept of, of, of a Jesus Christ, or the concept of a non-Christ. See, this is what makes me different from a lot of, and others as well, in this path. You'd be surprised. They really don't. But the decline is brought on through just the lack of touch that's going on in our society, the changes that are happening. Catholicism and the Christian edict is dying off. These, these old, which were, were at one time called slave religions, and they're not, this is not a slight upon me or a slight against anyone who believes in Christianity. It's just that it's not touching into the youth. The youth now are in touch with the power of Satan, the power of witchcraft, the ability to, to make their lives better. They're tired of being broke. They're tired of, of, of being slaves. You know, they, they want to have things. And it's all across the spectrum. It's all across the spectrum. Race has nothing to do with it. It's just every, every person that I've encountered are really, I mean, uh, are getting it more and more. And that's why I ran that survey. And, and uh, it was mind-boggling when it came back. So it just shows that things are changing in our society. Is it, but Satan also had nothing to do with it. It was just what Christianity was about. She's asking if the if Satanism had a role in the failure of, of Christianity as it's gone on. Satanism has had a role. It has. Maybe someone else will tell you that it didn't, and they want to dance and they want to play. But no, it has. It's actively. It started in the '90s, especially with the church burnings that went on in Norway, the attacks against Christianity wholesale, because it just, it, in some ways, it was a repression that some people felt, and they broke out of it. And it, yeah, it. Satanism played a major role in it. It still does. And it's, you know, Satanism, Luciferianism, whatever you want to call it, you know, I'm, in general terms, it, it has a role in, in why it's changed. The Christian edict is dying. Wouldn't you say that most people are evil instead of all? I don't consider myself it's a, it, it, he's asking if most people overall, most bad, most bad. yeah, well, most or whoever, most overall in terms of who is evil. Now, when I say this, I'm looking at it from a philosopher's standard. I believe all people are, but we are living in a construct of good through the ability to have law. Now, we may not, we don't consider ourselves evil because, no, we're not the types that are up on a train platform trying to stab someone or taking a car with a child in it so we can traffic it down somewhere in Indiana. No, but this kind of stuff is barbarism. That's barbaric evil. So I do think that mankind is capable and is evil in its totality, but there are levels to this type. Okay, uh, Charlie, you got the next question. Go ahead. All right. Let me get my picture up. All right, Winter, uh, uh, you, according to your survey, I have a little question about the results because uh, on, uh, there's any number of, uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, thousands of people are going to gather in arenas and a minister is going to put his hand on them and he's going to remove Satan from them. And they get thousands of people. And then if I go on a free antenna TV, there's entire channels of preachers, Christians, who are preaching uh, anti-Semitic uh, 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 statements. Uh, what, what was your take on these evangelical ministers and what they're up to? The evangelical movement which has really started in the 50s, 
Um, and it actually came out of our Great Depression has always been poverty pimps. They utilize Jesus as a tool to get money. They say, you give me money, you will prosper too. That is what the division came with Christianity. Now they use Christianity as a tool. They'll say that Jesus will save you, send me X amount of dollars. And unfortunately, there are thousands of people, as we know, that get into this because that gives them something to do. It gives them a path forward. These are people that don't really think for themselves, that fall into an ideology of cult control, where their guru, their leader, their evangelist becomes their king, and they follow what their king does, you know, and... It, it, it comes also, I mean, let's just look at the dynamic of what Jonestown did when he espoused, you know, Christianity, uses evangelical powers and cult-like activities and so on. And uh, he ended up killing a lot of people. Now, see, it's just the way it is. I mean, evangelicals, they'll use one thing. Today, it's okay, we're going to cleanse you of Satan. No one's going to cleanse anyone of Satan. It's all in their minds. It, no one can cleanse themselves of their natural evil. And that's where my take on philosophy anyway. It's all just a game to, to gain people, to manipulate people, to, to deceive them. It's like a Scientology sci-fi Ponzi scheme. You know, it's, it's, it's a joke. And it's unfortunate because this is, plays into a masterful amount of evil that even Machiavelli had talked about and his philosophy was to deceive the deceiver. And the, the, the evangelicals, evangelical and cults like them are taking just the playbook of Machiavelli and they're using Jesus as the method and they're just wearing their suit and tie and making a lot of money and manipulating people. As far as anti-Semitism, it's rife within their community because they think that uh, they can use that as well. You know, to hate on the Jews is like going to the lowest common denominator. There's not many Jews left in the world. There may be about 7 million left that are actively, maybe 5 million left um, that are actively still proclaiming themselves as Jews and so on. And, you know, and it's just going to the lowest common denominator. Let's, let's hate on the Jews. It's what's been happening since the Israelites enslaved Jews, or they've been nomads, or throughout time, and looking at everything. Um, you know, the Egyptians enslaved the Israelites, and so on. And it's just going to the lowest rung, and it plays into what Islam is doing, because they're saying all kinds of anti-Semitic stuff. You know, genocide Joe, and, you know, they're trying to turn Netanyahu into, you know, Hitler, and it's just all juxtaposition, and isn't, that, you know, or the, the Hitler thing goes both ways, right? I mean, they, they like use it, Hitler as some kind I mean, of dynamic Netanyahu as well. Netanyahu is using it against the Palestinians. They're saying they're Hitler. I mean, isn't it both right. kind of a hate-filled extremism? You can't, you know, one baby's death rejection. doesn't make it any better to kill another baby. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's all rubble. Down. It's all, yeah, it's a rubble yeah. dweller's mindset. And unfortunately over there, it's getting very biblical. They, they drive the rod and the staff and the, our God is greater, Allah Akbar, which means our God is the greatest. But, but Ned, isn't, do you see so something with Israel and the Zionist of creating like a false flag to bring this cleansing about so they can take the oil? It's all part of it. Well, you know, oil is just a part of it. I mean, the anti Charlie was discussing anti Semitism. I'm just saying that that is going to the lowest rung. It's like. But they call people that okay, are anti Semitic okay. anti Semitic as a political tool. Of They're using it. Yeah, it's just, it's all, it's all right? used. Yeah, it's one group's, one group's terrorism is another group's rebel is another group's police officer. Circular. All right, guys, come on. All right. Murder allowed. You know, why weren't you arrested when for killing, decapitating that bully when you were? Um, let's get control of the meeting.
What? For magic. You, you, it, was, it, was, it was all been psychosomatic as well. You um, said, Jamo? Several, four or five. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was in a car. It was, it, what happened was, and it, you're, you're, you're kind of concerned about this, and I'll address it because I did bring it up, just to show that it was my entrance path into realizing I had powers. Now, she was asking, what, why wasn't I arrested? What went on? In magic, when I was felt slighted, I was much younger. I was a teenager. I went into the woods. I conjured Belial. I felt the force of Belial. And I sent him out against my enemies to drive my enemies away. I wanted, I wanted them away from me. I don't want to fight four dudes. I don't want to be entangled with these bullies because bullying back in whenever I was was a bunch of nonsense. And within a week later, they were all drinking in a car and smashed it under a semi. Yep. Now, whether I had anything to do with that, I don't know. But it was me projecting outward my intention against these people. Now, we hate on people all the time. You know, people slight us and they hate on us. This was an aggressive attack on their part when I was much younger, much more naive. Now, I don't do this now. I don't go around and doing things just to do them. I don't put spells on people because I feel like it. I'm not petty. But when we get in and in showing in a context as a child, so this is why I had nothing to do with their accident. Technically, if we look at it scientifically, it was a Friday night. They were out drinking. They were way inebriated. They were, you know, you know, and the situation was very treacherous out there. And I know they were all killed in that accident. So that's the only death. Of the okay, person. okay. There's been others. There's yeah. been. There's, when you work with the police, you say they started right. to think you were a suspect. But right. When you when you're a psychic, yes. When you're a psychic, if you work with the police and have information that they're not privy to, especially in in the north. They they start looking at you as being involved. Yeah. Okay, Charlie, you got another question? Go ahead. Yeah, all right. Let me get my picture up. Yes, uh, Winter. In 1947, they discovered the Dead Sea Scrolls, and among those was something the apoc apocryphal book. It's not a part of the Bible. The Book of Enoch, Enoch, and it. It stated that in there that 200 fallen angels were sent by God to earth. And they basically established a material culture on earth as opposed to spiritual culture. Do you have any knowledge or recognition of what it, what this, they call them, they're also sometimes claimed to be, these were the Anunnaki. Uh, do you have any idea, or are you dismiss this? Well, as I do have an I do have an opinion, Charlie. Um, it was he's asking if the Adakian or the Anak or the people that were came or or discussed about within the Dead Sea Scrolls, which were discovered in the forties uh, in a cave. Actually, there were five of them. Uh, I believe they're even known as possibly the first five books, the original books of the biblical texts um you know there's a lot of stories that have even been told ironically about the Anaki or the enoch within the roman empire now roman empire predates a lot of what biblical stuff has to say the bible came much later than even nero i mean it came the bible came much later we have we have context of this discussion of some kind of aliens coming down or being a part of our culture within the Roman Empire. They discuss it in different texts, and Epictetus was one of the different um, sages at the time who was writing about it. So something I think when we talk about coming down or you know, aliens and so on, in my opinion, they're aliens. That, that there's something, yeah, they, they came and meshed in the planet and they've had interactions with it forever. So I think when we discuss that and in those writings, you know, and it's touched on immensely within ancient aliens, 
in discussing, you know, in the, the history shows and so on, ad nauseum almost. So I think that uh, those, when we're discussing that, in these are mostly aliens coming down and getting involved with us, which I believe in aliens. So. No, no, no. Go ahead, Mike. Um, well, how does evil, the devil, what, what are some acts that are here on the murder, value on wars? What, what are some of the acts of evil and the uh, devil? The acts of evil, you're acting, what is the act of evil on earth? Yes. Our presence, <laughs> our satanic race is the act of evil we are i know i know and i'm talking in totality we as a species are the act we we are not good we aspire we are aspiring to be good and i hope that someday we will be a utopian society of altruism but right now we are not we are not a a good species we were the first act and so everything comes from that from that first all bashing the skull in of his opponent to to the to the wars of, of of all kinds of throughout history and and everything that has happened that is evil on this planet the human race the satanic race is behind it absolutely take something from someone yes those are acts of evil they're they're not good that's a that's all a part of something that has to do with Caesar. Yeah. And Caesar is far greater than we are. Caesar is where we are under our law. I mean, that is, you know, cheating in any aspect could be something, but it depends on what your motive is. I mean, I'm, I, it's all a matter of, in relative terms, to be honest. How about being a polluter? Well, we all are polluters, so I wouldn't consider it evil. It's just a natural part of our state of existence okay. i'm going to ask you a couple of crazy questions for what do you for what is the basis of donald trump's support and his base for the presidency donald trump is just a rich person who worked really hard to get where he is in a lot of non-ways he's he's developed a brand and he wants to continue that brand and he wants to make himself into a, a greater, more stronger individual. He's the, he's the, he would be the height of, a, of, a, of an elitist. He would be you know, very much an individual who proclaims Christianity and really is doing very Machiavellian things. Everything within our current body politic is a hoax. It's all a lie. Everything, everything that you think, everything is set to division. They allow no other parties. They don't want anything but two-party hoax. They both work together. They have very minimal lines between them. The, the deception that's being wrought against the people is what Machiavelli is, you know, prime. Read Machiavelli's work. Look into some of Lord Byron's work on the topic the body politic of the Roman Empire. All of where we're at as a republic is based on Rome. We are the new Rome. We will fall as Rome unless we change. But I think that we won't fall per se. But America is, is founded on very much occult symbolism, occult power, occult force. The, the will of our ability to kill to perfect an ever more perfect weapon that if we we are at a standstill in our society but not for much longer and um donald trump is just he's a part of he's a he's a part of the whole charade the whole dance that's going on before our eyes we want it we want to believe we want it to right you know innately oh i want to be i want the democrats to win i want I want the Republicans to win. But if you really subjectively look back and look at ourselves and see what's really going on, we're like, this is all, all deception. 
They're all just playing with us. They deny our votes all the time, or they say the vote counts, but then it doesn't. And we're individuals. We're very much cascaded in individual boxes, and we're running from box to box. Hey, Judy, your movie's on, isn't it? Seven o'clock? Uh, it's, uh, it's about 6.36 right now. We'll go to late, and uh, we'll, be take, we'll be going in a rebuttal soon. I'm going to allow about maybe 10 more minutes of questions. Our speaker didn't speak down. We can speak your mind, and you'll get the last word. We need to leave by 7.45, so... We're you let me know when we're finished. So. Well, I've got one more for you. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I'll let Ellen, I'll let Ellen go. All right. Given the state of the world, what do you see ahead, just off the top of your head, for the next five, ten years out as future trends for humanity? War is the power constant and a nuclear attack. It's just going to happen. It's, so it's inevitable. Yeah. So you think we're going to be in a nuclear it's gonna, They're already using low-range nuclear weapons in the war in the Ukraine. They're already using, they're already playing with the devil. Every day we're hearing, we've developed the weapon known as Satan, which they have. They've developed the weapon known as the ICBM to end all worlds. One weapon, you know, this is like age under the planet of the apes or something. This is nonsense. We need to get off of this mindset. This self-destruction is innately a part of what that barbarism that I'm discussing is. We need to get off of this or we are going to end ourselves. We are working in good ways and positivity through satanic science to evolve and to do things, but we are also going the opposite direction in a lot of ways. So within the next decade, it's going to be a ride. From 2034, by 2034, it is going to be a different world. It's already transitioned this much from 2005. Mm -hmm. we, we now with the adoration of artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. which surpassed humans 10 times. Yes. And they had a breakthrough with cancer that was through vibration, that they were able to vibrate cancer apart. So this is, I only discuss in the real. All right. China, um, are there any Confucianism, she's discussing and she's talking about China as far as being a satanic or people in, in, in China being satanic. Let me talk about Confucianism. I love Confucianism. His, his concept of the obstacle is the way. Yes, I've studied it and it's wonderful. It, it's really, it's refreshing, it's straightforward, it's ancient, and it really is something to look at as a human race it's it's it says a lot to how uh to come together in a lot of ways um you know it shows you know by giving you can receive and so on so confucianism is wonderful um because i am as i said a philosopher and i you know and so on now in talking about chinese people they are not our enemy that we it is all being set up that they are our enemy that they're doing things now. The, the groups of the government, certain groups within the government, as in our government, are up to nefarious activities. They wholesale steal from our intellectual property. They are wholesaling, doing some terrible things to human beings. They do experiment on human beings. I would have to say that within China, yes, but they are Satanist indeed, not word. It's their actions, and they're doing it in very low-grade level, that barbarism, where they're experimenting with, you know, the different viruses, biological weapons. They're experimenting on people, whereas we would never do so. They do a lot of horrible things that are indeed satanic, but not by word. They would never overtly say that they are, but their actions are. The way they're carrying on is the way, and it's only certain groups, and they're not all interlinked. There's so much separatism within China because there's just so many people. They're they're basically like 60% of the society is in survivor mode. 
So that's where they're at. You know, when you're in survivor mode, you can't think of anything else. Okay, yeah. I got one thing. Go ahead. Yeah. I think what's interesting is you're a philosopher, right? And um, do you ever debate, um, you know, is there a way to, who would be the one to debate you? She's asking if a debate is possible and in, in debate me. I have debated. Yeah, I've debated some individuals that were staunch Christians or individuals, other philosophers that had the uh, opposite uh, of my premise of all men are created evil. They believe that, that humans are good that have fallen. So, yeah, I mean, and I always want to take on a debate, but they're, they just don't. They're scared of me because I'm too strong in my knowledge. But I have been, one thing I will address is I have no big ego about this. I don't go around thinking I'm the man or I'm some big fighter or I can take on the world because I can't. I'm just in my box and I do what I do. And, you know, and I've always wanted to tear it off. I'm not trying to proselytize or be a Jehovah's Witness or push my ideology on others. Mm -hmm. And just so you know, none of this has to be taken on by anybody. Right. This is just yeah. my world. And yes, as a philosopher, I love to debate, but it's hard to find people right. to debate. That, so to follow that up. I saw Tulane, a voodoo queen versus a skeptic. And it would might be interesting to see Jim Fetzer and you kind of debate as a skeptic, right? Because in a way, you're, mm -hmm. you're kind of a believer. In, oh, I'm a believer. Yeah, yeah I'm not an atheist. I believe in, the, in a greater energy, but my energy is darkness. But yes, yeah, yeah that sounds I'm fascinating. And voodoo, is, is, she's asking about voodoo. Voodoo is very much on a current of real life stuff. I have seen stuff happen with voodoo that makes my mind blown. Like I knew this practitioner in New York that like like would do stuff like with with certain like waving around and like just rhythm and vibration and incantation and using Inakian, which is an ancient word, not really ancient, it was developed by Dr. John D. by who was funded by the Queen of England at his time during the 1500s, 1600s. But um, he utilized all this and he just brought change about really fast. So voodoo is something yeah. very interesting. Have you heard of um, Lynn Horowitz, Dr. Lynn Tam, Tam can control the meeting, please. Charlie, we're following the Tim, will you follow the, get control of the meeting? Hold on. Will you get control of the meeting? I've got control of the meeting. Charlie, you're the one disrupting. Let yeah, Ellen finish. No. Have you heard this? This is a dialogue. Vegas, when there were a lot of deaths or something, and um, Lynn Harwood talks about frequency. It's you know, what I'm saying. Nasty, what look like. In case you see one. Frequency versus a, a She's discussing frequencies. Frequencies and vibration is the future as well. This is just like what I've touched on again, this repeated myself, the AI discovering, and I don't even know if it was AI that discovered it per se, I think they utilized a little bit of it, that vibrated cancer part and so on, and some subjects that eliminated cancer in totality. Yes, frequency is everything. The earth vibrates on ley lines. You wanna be on ley lines when you're casting spells. We are frequency. Our heart irradiation rhythm is in tune with our planet. So it's all frequency, it's all projection and power. Now, if I'm projecting outward, you can feel it and it will go right through you. You will feel a force. Now, it, it, it's like going into what the Star Wars concept, but the Star Wars stuff was all borrowed from this. Yes, if I begin to project and I want things to happen, you feel it and it is, and you get it in your rhythm. And if you're in certain alignments, certain ley lines like in Arizona or if you're in a ley line in Sweden and or you're in a ley line in Chicago, Illinois, which has a massive one that runs right down Albion Street. It's just huge. Right. They, Amplifies uh, uh, your power. I think he talks about, you know, so that you can heal yourself. The yes. bioelectrical energy also mm. can be a weapon, a bioweapon, you know, can be used. Everything that heals can be used to kill. Everything, right. yes. And everything is an opposite. And it's in, in the frequencies, yes, 
in in what uh, Dr. Uh, I believe he was uh, Dr. Casey. Uh, he was in he was in Kentucky. He used to be able to astral to people and heal them in their sleep as well. There's a foundation of him in in Virginia. He was very much into this as well. So Edgar Casey, Edgar Casey right? Edgar Gase, not Casey, Casey. Correct, correct. What did you say about Barbara Bush, then the daughter of? Uh, She's asking if Barbara Bush was the daughter of Aleister Crowley. She was. She yeah. was. Barbara Bush was an illegitimate child from a woman known as Pierce who had uh, magical interactions with Aleister Crowley in Europe. They were in France together and um, and they were doing sex magic together. And he was proclaiming, Aleister Crowley at the time, was proclaiming himself the epistemist. The epistemist is the almighty of a magician. So that's where you get that. And Barbara Bush came from that. And it, they know it. And if you look at pictures side by side, you can just tell. But, you know, that's all in theory and conjecture. It's just a concept. Of, okay, Ellen, Ellen. There's a, well, no, but that there's a kind of evil Bush family. That well, you know, you've heard me go on about how I think of body politics is. I think everything is evil in that, in that game. They're all out for power. They're all out for the same thing. Are you telling us you don't see anything good in any people who are in this country? It's, it, the body politics is the goal of Machiavellia. To deceive the deceiver, to reign over others, to view most people as peasants. If you read The Prince, it's a book that he wrote that, that is the, uh, the Bible of these politicians. I mean, I've mentioned him so much tonight, but it's to be, if you read that book, you'll see it. And yeah, I don't have faith in a lot of these politicians. I don't buy into it. I see it for what it is. I've been sucked in from time to time. And we just do because the propaganda is so strong. Propaganda is so strong. And we want to believe our guy. <coughs> it's all nonsense. <coughs> We're being played. Satanism and Luciferianism. All right, that'll be our final question. Satanism and Luciferianism, one is more of a uh, ground-based, which is I am. It's more material, which I am. Um, I like to have expensive cars and houses and churches and go places and travel. That would be my satanic side. Luciferianism, which goes right along with it, is more my cosmic side. And looking at the psychic, the projection, the magic, the black magic, the projection, the spiritual aspects of of my dark you know, past. Okay, all right, Ellen. Let's uh, let's thank our speaker tonight. We're going to go into rebuttals now. I'll give everybody three to four minutes, and then you'll get the last word. We'll go. It's about ten minutes to eight. Now we'll go to about eight thirty. Let you get take as long as you need to do your uh, final sure. thing. Seven thirty. Seven thirty. I mean, so you know. I want to say thank you very much for coming up and uh, giving a, a, good, a good defense of your views. And uh, although I don't agree with them, but, you yeah. know, but I'm just saying uh, thanks a lot. Okay. All right, let's uh, go. We'll, we'll go with Ellen first and then we'll go with Charlie for the rebuttals. Let's thank our speaker. Please. Thank you, guys. Sit down and relax. Yeah. And okay. uh, all, right. all right, Ellen, we're going to give you about uh, four minutes. Oh, yeah. 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 Hi. Um, yeah. Thanks. I'm Ellen You're Corley. Next, Charlie after Ellen. And uh, I, I actually, I really enjoyed your talk. I, I like philosophy myself, and um, you know, it's kind of uh, interesting to hear it extended. And um, I, I had heard that Machiavellian, uh, the difference between Luciferianism and Satanism is that Luciferians, you know, think it's good to be evil. They, and, you know, versus just Satanism is just kind of evil versus, and I, I do think the Machiavellian uh, way, the neocons and the neoliberals and our politicians today, our Federalist Society judges are evil, <laughs> but they think it's good to be evil. And, um, you know, they kind of stolen 30, trillion, $36 trillion in debt, and they, that's a good thing, too. They, they think war is good and power is good. Um, 
yeah, I had heard uh, James Perlow is a a, um, a public intellectual, a Christian public intellectual philosopher, and um, he he's the one that first woke me up to this idea that if he's like if you haven't noticed by now, though, if you're studying the deep state, that there's something Luciferian going on, and I have tried to. I'm basically uh, fight it, you know, someone who is thinks my calling is to take it on kind of like a saint. <laughs> That's actually also James Perlov's last book is that we need to be saints and, um, and work miracles for the good, you know? And um, so uh, I don't know what, um, what our speaker thinks about this, but uh, this idea of, Saints and miracles, I would be interested. I don't think he's listening to me at all. But, um, right, you know, uh, James Perloff, right, is brilliant and an analyst of the deep state. Of the deep. That's what I've been analyzing the last five years or so and, you know, thousands of books on it. So it is a kind of a philosophy, a, a history of the covert, um, hidden uh, truth of what's really going on. And, you know, my dream or thought is to expose this, you know, through writing and history, but people like James Perloff, or you would think it could happen in academia, you know, in a when I went to study liberal arts, you know, before it was captured by the technocrats and um, capitalists and corporatists and probably Luciferians, um, yeah. You know, uh, if you could debate and do a kind of a philosophy education, you know, a Socratic kind of discussion in class, you know, of um, I think, you know, education. And I, I think the speaker agreed with this to an extent that we are striving to be good. And uh, that's that gives me some hope. <laughs> I, um, I, you know, I, it's, I'd be interested in knowing his family's background, I, you know, I basically, you know, believe in science and we have to understand how our, how are we defining science now? And I do know that there's evil science. I think the, the, the injections that are developed as a evil medicine and, you know, so it's better to talk about it than not to be able to talk about it because it's, you can't talk about it on YouTube. You know, um, I don't think we can afford to let YouTube, which is also a, um, a Google owned, created by the CIA and the NQTEL, um, you know, it's weird. We, we've got to have free media. We have to have freedom of information, total freedom of information, total freedom of knowledge, uh, because, and communication, because this is the information age. This is the communication age, and if it is controlled and censored and um, edited so that we can't do what Bob Lichtenberg describes, make meaning, put our thoughts together as analysts. Um, I basically am an analyst, you know, I got intelligence analysts. They, you know, my mother said, just you're not an analyst, you know, just make a guy a cup of coffee and accept it. It's an evil world out there. You're at nothing. <laughs> the men are, men got all the money and power and you just have to kiss their ass. But um, maybe my hope is that maybe there will be a women's feminist 3.0 revolution and we will, uh, we will basically um, take over. <laughs> For the good, you know, um, kind of like Jane Adams or the saints, I, kind of like a Joan of Arc, you know, wow. to empower ourselves. The one thing I wanted to say is also the, the uh, I think it was, um, I can't think of it, that Carl Rogers said, we have to, to face this existential age or a problem like 60% of people are think while for having internal locus of control and obedience to authority we have to take our power back and basically learn to be assertive or turn it over to a good higher power and dealing with 
these evil forces around us. All right, Charlie, go ahead. Charlie, you're next. Go ahead. All right. Charlie, you have Go ahead. All right. I want to thank our speaker for an interesting presentation, and I'll be eclectic as usual. I've got specifically five areas I will cover. Uh, this occult at the time was called New Age. It was very popular in the outset of the 60s and is considered responsible for some reason for the uh, societal changes of sex, drugs, and rock and roll of the 60s, the cultural, cultural changes that took place can be attributed to some extent to this interest in the occult, amazingly enough. Number two, <laughs> in scriptures itself, Judeo-Christian scriptures, there is very little discussion of Satan or Lucifer. The term Lucifer, in fact, does not even appear. Um, you've got a little reference there in the Garden of Eden, the book of Job, um, and that's about it. Um, it. And Jesus was tempted by the devil in the desert. So that's a summation of the totality of uh, speaking to fallen angels. Scripture has actually very little. There's later creation of Christian theologians that you find the creation of full-blown Satanism or Luciferianism as a concern. Number three, this was manifested itself, of course, in the hunt for witches, which took place in Europe. Conceivably, 100,000 people perished. Uh, truth by uh, fire, so to speak. And of course, there had been the Salem, Massachusetts, in which we had witch trials. So there were practitioners, and the Christians pursued them and uh, thought they could identify them and eliminate them from the community. Um, the next one is Luciferianism is a package belief system. There's any number of these that have prevalence in society. You cannot differentiate one from the other. Uh, they give you a totality. Uh, you can be intellectually lazy. Um, the, uh, by the way, the presence of a, a Lucifer or Satan appears in other religions. Oddly enough, even Buddhism. Um, so it is a manifestation of interest. The conduct issues in philosophy, I, I, I would say, if you're going to pursue the topic, I would look for the ethical philosophers as a beginning with the Greeks on through, and particularly the Germans. Uh, they had much to say, categorical imperative things of that nature. If you're going to pursue the good, versus evil type of discussion. Philosophy has a great deal to be said about this issue here. Um, last of all, just the other day, regarding this great reset, I heard some modern lecture and the gentleman said, we're on a path of self-destruction. Um, of course, he didn't mention it tonight, a lot of this is rooted, of course, in the book of Revelations. Um, I think John of Patmos uh, was in a cave and, of course, uh, came up with this concept of Armageddon uh, and the 666. Uh, that's where the, a lot of the basis is. And you heard it there now. The new term, I guess, is Great Reset. Um, there's a whole branch of separate religions called the Adventists, uh, who make this the focal point of the entire theology, the Adventists. So, you, uh, of course, um, among them are the Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses, and of course, the Seventh-day Adventists. So it is prevalent within Christianity as a central doctrine. Again, thank you, Winter Lake. Come again sometime now that you know the lay of the land. Thank you. 
All right, Mike, go ahead. All right. Thank, thanks to the speaker for coming out on a rough weather. And um, it was an interesting topic. We don't I don't think we've ever done anything on the devil or Lucifer. So this was very unusual. Thanks for the new topic material. Uh, and uh, but I was trying to figure out, you know, people, people just got to learn how to do the right thing anymore. Uh, seems like this country is doing a lot of wrong things a lot of times. And uh, I kind of blame that on mostly the corporation media. There's just a lot of bad information out there, whether it's smartphones or other electronic garbage. But um, so... You know, I was trying to uh, figure out what are the really devilish things that people do. And I'm guessing murder, wars, theft, other crimes that people should know better not to do. Stealing, stealing power, stealing electricity. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, so. Taking over the world. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of these wars are about oil and resources and land. Um, but um, I don't know. I don't think I told anybody. And, huh? I don't think you're evil. Yeah, so I think it should be most men are evil. <laughs> or many men are evil. Usually women are. Shouldn't the parents have taught them not to be evil? Right. <laughs> Maybe, yep. Yeah. They're saying that there's a problem with not being taught enough government and civics and For right and wrong. Right and wrong and philosophy in schools. Um, so maybe you know that would be a topic, would be a good topic in schools. Grade school, high school is the, the devil and uh, doing the wrong thing. So we're constantly fighting the I mean people doing the wrong thing. Poisoning people. I have a feeling fentanyl is the used for murders a lot of times and suicide, but the media is too stupid to you know, admit that. When you say that, Andy, I wouldn't say that. What about the policing? The police say there are people, the FBI, the CIA, there to enslave us. What is going on here? Charlie, Hold on, Charlie, turn off Charlie. What the uh, All right. Go ahead. So anyway, I, I think this is a really good topic, material, material evil and law breaking and not doing the right thing, because they, a lot of Americans have a problem, a lot of the world has a problem with it. And uh, uh, we need a better civilization out there and doing the right thing out there. Is Charlie evil? I don't think Charlie's, yeah. Charlie, have you broken any laws? Or murdered anybody? I don't think we should have hate speech at the college. If you want to give hate speech, uh, lady, well, please don't come to the college, all right? This is the question. It's a hate speech statement. Hate concerned. speech. Sir, come on, guys. You're not welcome at the college with hate speech. All right, I, I'm trying to think of something. Uh, Intent to harm. Is that evil? Huh? You're not Intent welcome at the college with hate speech. All right, Alexa. Okay, are you done, Mike? And Charlie, have you spoken yet? Yes. Okay, I and was I had I had to take care of some at least Kelly school. All right, who else wants to speak? Karina. I'm gonna go too. So Karina, if you want to get up there, go ahead. Uh, Karina All right, Karina. Are you coming? Karina's waving us off. Why don't you go uh, Tim? All right. You know, I found tonight's talk. Fascinating. You know, um, what our speaker had talked about with all men being evil, it's exactly what uh, Jesus Christ said happened to the human race. Sin entered through Adam, and we all alienated God, and uh, we all fall short of his glory and his uh, standards. None of us can meet those standards. And in a sense, you know, we as human beings are fallen creatures. And the only thing was that uh, God wanted to reconcile us to him. 
and that was through the death and sacrifice of Jesus Christ's only son. Where the problem comes in with religions is that they take things and they a little extra. The thing is, is that uh, in my own research of Christianity, um, I have had seen several things go right, even though they may go wrong. I have seen um, several instances of divine providence where I've been able to get through things properly. I have seen several instances of where, you know, the power of God's helped me out in life. Much like our um, speaker here said he had a power with the uh, evil one and he was re re going into sickness and there has been a lot of talk about people in the scripture who've been, uh, you know, endowed with the power of Satan. He is the prince of this world. Um, do I believe this stuff? Yes, I do, because I have seen personally an exorcism at one point. I was a little bit taken aback. I don't want to get into the series of it now, but I did see an exorcism. And uh, I do believe that uh, there are exorcists out there. Um, if you want to look at a really quick tale of one, just go to the Art Bell archives. And uh, there was a Catholic priest who did a lot of this. Now, for me, you know, when you're talking about spiritual things and this stuff, that's usually the last thing you look at is when, when something's going wrong. Because it's usually there's like a psychological explanation or something like that. But if you look at the book Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis, he starts it out with an awareness of mankind not meeting a standard. The second part is that most people know they cannot redeem or heal themselves. And when I know about Christianity is that there is a, a, a substitute sacrifice for sin. Now, I don't know, I can get into the deep mysteries of it and whatnot tomorrow morning. I'll be at a, at a Christian church called Springbrook Community Church and a Catholic church with my mother tomorrow who also believes the same thing I do. But all I'm going to say is this, is that he is right about a lot of stuff. And I do believe in eternal heaven and hell and, and, and an afterlife. I mean, you've seen it. Several people talk about uh, spiritual things. And uh, there are certain evidences that I believe are going to, that will prove the claims of Christ scientifically. I don't want to get into it here, but that, for me, is what I believe the truth is, that all men are sinners, they have fallen and fallen short of the glory of God, it took God's son a sacrifice on the cross to redeem them, and your choice in life is to rather accept him or reject him, and that's where will be your choice to either go up or down. In the meantime, what can I do as an individual? Number one, make sure that I have a good witness, make sure that i try to live those things and I'm going to fall far short even St. Paul who in Romans 8 says how be it the very thing I do that I hate how be it the thing that I hate I do therefore it is a sin that dwelleth in me therefore I need to follow Christ more and I don't know about you guys but I want to be in the winning side I hope that uh, I don't want to discriminate against people I don't want to be involved with it. I don't want to take anything wrong. One of the things in this free speech forum that I really like is that we do get a chance to talk about alternative views. We do get a chance to speak about things like this. Yes, it does get a little contentious, but, you know, at least we can keep things civil. With that, I'll be done with my rebuttal. Any other speakers? All right, Andy, go ahead. Yes, I have. I did it as a sophomore. I did that as a sophomore in school. At college. I'm not saying Jesus. Oh, or is it or is it an exorcist? Oh that's I said Jesus, not Jesus. Yeah, I know. You remember that meme. I remember that meme real well. Uh there was a meme up. Okay, Vicky, you want to say something? Vicky, your hands up. You want to rebut? Go ahead, Vicki. Yes, I do. I just wanted to add a couple of comments about the Satanic Temple, which was brought up earlier. As the speaker rightly said, they don't profess a belief in Satan or indeed anything supernatural. 
Their purpose appears to be to support the separation of church and state so that if something comes up where a religious group one might want to hold a religious event or, or series of lessons in a public uh, school, they can always say, well, you know, we're a religion too, the satanic temple, so we get equal time. And do you think your kid would rather sign up for, you know, Bible study or Satanism or, or you know, satanic issues? So there's a certain shock value there. They Then they mount um, legal battles. They also support reproductive rights. They feel that abortion bans are religiously inspired and that non-viable fetal tissue belongs to the body it's in, the pregnant person who can make decisions about that. So that's my understanding of what they do. They wear sometimes strange makeup and clothing, rather goth, but otherwise seem to be quite reasonable people. Okay, uh, Andy, you want to go next? Okay, Andy, you want to go next? Um, anybody else got a rebuttal real quick? You know, Andy's coming back. Um, all right, anybody online? We still got a few minutes. We're waiting for our Andy to come out. All right, Andy, you're up next. Well, yeah, just, just go ahead. But, um, I'd like to thank our speaker tonight for <clears throat> giving a thought-provoking talk. I agree with him on several key points. The ancient Mayans left one of their prophecies. They said when a 26,000-year cycle ends and a new one begins, for about a decade, you've got a war between the forces of good and the forces of evil that come right out from underground or wherever they've been hanging out. And it's a massive, intense war for the soul of humanity. <clears throat> That's what we're seeing today. Uh, we're seeing it in America, especially where the forces of evil uh, in the form of billionaire predators that have virtually no ethics, morals, or conscience. They're just going for the money. They plan to take over the U.S. government on November 5th of this year and get rid of all regulations on billionaire polluters. That's, that's uh, a whole bunch of criminals that are masquerading right now as Republican politicians. They're not Republicans, they're criminals. Unless we wake up to that fact, after November 5th, our country is gone. We have 10 months. <clears throat> we have 10 months to face this reality. What a lot of people are doing is like uh, continuing to watch a movie in their living room, concentrating on watching a really good movie at home while the house is burning down around them. If they can't recognize where they are with reality. Uh, our, our country is gone in 10 months because they're, they're planning on switching vote totals. There, there won't be an election. There will be an installation. It won't matter how many progressives or Democrats or anybody else vote against Trump. The billionaires and the media are going to install him by switching vote totals and suppressing vote totals. That's the game plan. And they're putting key people in place, all those good people that resisted the overthrow of our government four years ago, those people are being replaced by what we call Trump toadies. And people right now, our country is packed. We have kangaroo courts all over this country. One sec. There's a book published around 1982. You can probably get it online. It's called Adam's Eve, Ending the Nuclear Age. It's an anthology. And John Goffman wrote an article in this book 
called the law versus justice. The law versus justice. He recognized that nothing illegal, people, you have to recognize nothing illegal happened to the people in Germany during the war. Every step along the way, from picking people up, putting them on trains, <clears throat> trains transporting the gas chambers, it was all legal. They had politicians and judges that made that legal. And this is what we've got in America today. We've got we've got a Supreme Court that says, well, we'll hold a hearing to see if, if that piece of uh, Constitution is legal. Yeah. We're looking at a big, big crime snowballing down on us on November 5th. And every, every month, every week before that, all the way along to November 5th. So it's time to wake up a lot of people. A lot of you here on Zoom know decent, kind, loving families. They wouldn't want to see their a child murdered by a serial killer or anything else. They have the same values. We have 90% of us, 98% of us care about children's futures, care about our own children, grandchildren. We're all on the same page, but we have to help people that have gotten sucked into the cult of Trump and will vote for any criminal <coughs> that has a Republican name on uh, our in the column. They'll vote for that because they think that's um, countering the evil of the Democrats. One of the greatest myths that's been promoted in the last 20 years is that everything the Democrats do is evil. The megachurches, for those of you that don't know, the megachurches in the South, again, are teaching that Trump was sent by God to lead us out of the darkness. Trump is sent by God to lead us out of the darkness. Picture that. Picture the mindset of somebody that thinks that Trump is a good uh, a leader of the Christian party. That's where we are. Our speaker talked about what happened to Jonestown. Was that 900 people poisoned uh, somewhere? Drinking Kool Aid. Um, well, we got 20 million people to train starting in 2015. This didn't didn't happen overnight, and the media is largely responsible for portraying it as well. Both sides are evil. Both sides are evil. One of the things that I was born with and, and taught, I don't believe that babies are born inherently evil. I don't believe that. I think the evil behavior is learned by the what you grow up in. There's a lot of good people doing a lot of good things in this country. If we support them, things get better. But we have to stand up and recognize the old English law saying silence means consent. That's where it started, the Sir Thomas More's trial. Silence means consent. If we're silent about something, we don't speak up, it means that we're going along with it. So at every opportunity, I'm speaking up this year, all the way to November 5th. And everybody around the country that understands what's happening in our future in the state should be doing the same thing. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else for rebuttals? Ernie? Ernie, you want to do a rebuttal? Ernie, Ernie. Ernie, okay. All right, then. Then let us call our speaker up for our final rebuttal and uh, his thoughts on the program tonight. And uh, you may take up to about 20 minutes if you want to, but if you just want to say good night, that's fine, too. Okay, I'll talk a little bit. Yeah, we've got a little time, so we got about maybe 15, 20 minutes. So go ahead and uh, say your piece. Okay. In looking at our totality, I've stated that we are in a two-party hoax illusion. We are. If you are a banker, you buy the paper that's going to oppose you. It's going to speak your word. If you're a high corporate god, you want something, you buy it. Our society is based on control, power, manipulation, insinuation, mind control, and propaganda. You've got to understand that we hate Trump or we hate Biden. Okay, the more you insinuate that you hate Trump, you indict him, you put him, you give him street cred, you give him a picture, you're making him the Messiah. So he's gonna be elected next president. 
that's fine. But it's a game that you've got to see through all of it. You've got to understand that in totality, it's all of you're being gamed. The politics, until we as a, as a society of citizens rise up against the corporatism that, hey, you shouldn't buy a paper that's going to say what you want to say. And why are you bring? how are you able to bring frivolous lawsuits that elevate someone that's a federal place? So you're inadvertently, you're elevating someone. Oh, he needs to be thrown off the ballot. Do you know that that only makes this person more powerful? Whether it's Trump or Steve or Joe or Bill, it's all game and it's very much thought out. They sit around in their boardrooms and they're like, which button can I press to get this going where I want? What, which more popularity can I keep my guy in the mainframe of everything? Well, let's let's do this or let's do that. It's all very calculated and it's all very much a, an illusion. So until we understand exactly what's going on, we're going to be very much in, in this state of, of kind of what well, us versus them and divisiveness and racism is the tool and so on. But I do believe that mankind is a race of inherent evil and we are aspiring possibly to be a greater, a greater beast than what we are. But just know that some of the biggest beasts out there, there is no good within our politics. There is only evil and it's lesser evil. And they're in this constant circular struggle, which is very Confucian of two serpents that are just trying to constantly devour each other. We're just in this great game. And, and unfortunately, the citizens of our planet are the ones that are being played. But with that said, that's uh, generally where I'm at. And thank you for having me. Hi. Very good. Yeah, yeah. And this tonight closes out the College of Complexes. I want to again wish everybody a good night and uh, wait for next week when we have more fun and familiarity here in the playground for people who think. And I'll close out with this one thought. A fool is not interested in understanding, but only in the revealing of his own mind. Straight out of Proverbs. Thanks, everybody, and have a good night. Good night. All right, good one. Nothing he doesn't do. Yeah.